Muslims love to claim that Deuteronomy 18.18 is about Muhammad, but the rest of the chapter explains why Moses would have executed Muhammad for being a false prophet. If we were to go back to the book of Deuteronomy, specifically in Deuteronomy chapter 18, where, by the way, our Muslim friends love to quote from Deuteronomy 18, verses 15 to 18, claiming that Muhammad is a prophet like Moses. If that is the case, and if Muhammad was living at, uh, at the days of Moses and behaving and doing the things that he did, would Moses really consider him to be a true prophet? Or would Moses consider stoning Muhammad? Why do I say this? Because that's exactly what the law of Moses teaches, and that's what Deuteronomy 18 teaches as well. With me here to unpack all of that is our dear brother, David, uh, David Wood. You know, David. So, um, what is it about Deuteronomy 18 that our Muslim friends somehow magically, they do not continue to read right after verse 18? Yeah, this is, uh, no one, no one is better at cherry picking than Muslim apologists like uh, Ahmed Didat and Zakir Naik and Shabir Ali and so on. Um, they, they will go to a verse, look for a way to twist it into something about Muhammad. And somehow, somehow it never crosses anyone's mind to read a verse earlier or a verse later or two verses later. Uh, almost always, whenever Muslims are quoting a verse of the Bible to show that it talks about Muhammad and it's a prophecy about Muhammad, there is something in the immediate context that would make Muhammad a false prophet. But they always, they always ignore that. And Deuteronomy chapter 18, verse 18, is their favorite Old Testament prophecy that's supposed to show that Muhammad is a true prophet. So let me just read the verse that we're the, the verse that they use, and then we'll see what happens if we just go two verses later, which they never ever do. Right. So Deuteronomy chapter 18, verse 18, uh, God says to Moses, I will raise up for them a prophet like you from among their brothers, mm -hmm. and I will put my words in his mouth, and he shall speak to them all that I command him. Muslims say, well, this is clearly talking about Muhammad. And they'll draw comparisons between Moses and Muhammad. Well, Moses was both a general and a lawgiver. And so, you know, Muhammad and Moses are, are alike in that respect. Um, the, the obvious problems here is it's the verse says, a prophet like you from among their brothers in the context in Deuteronomy. This means your fellow, your fellow Jews. So it just doesn't fit that this is talking about Muhammad. There are all kinds of other problems as well, because uh, later at the very end of the book of Deuteronomy, it explains what it means to be a prophet like Moses. And it's uh, knowing God face to face and miraculous deeds. Muhammad didn't know God face to face and he didn't do miraculous deeds. So he is, uh, he's, not even in the, in, he's not even a contender here. But if our Muslim friends would just read two verses later, and have any awareness at all of what's in their sources, they would realize that this verse calls Muhammad a false prophet. Exactly. And that if Muhammad were alive during the time of Moses, Moses would have ordered the people to pick up stones and stone him to death as right. an obvious false prophet. But they don't do that. They don't read just two verses later where we read, but the prophet who presumes to speak a word in my name that I have not commanded him to speak or who speaks in the name of other gods, that same prophet shall die. Would have been a death penalty. Notice, God gives two criteria here of a false prophet. The prophet who presumes to speak a word in my name that I have not commanded him to speak. So he says, here's a revelation from God. And it's not actually a revelation from God. Or the other criterion, who speaks in the name of other gods. And here in Deuteronomy, this doesn't just mean, hey, I speak in the name of some, it's promoting polytheism. That's the, that's the warning in the book of Deuteronomy. You, you can't promote speaking to other gods, praying to other gods, these kinds of things. So we have two criteria of a false prophet who would have been sentenced to death by Moses. And interestingly, the two things that we're told here would get you a death sentence under a, under Moses 
are two things that Muhammad did, <laughs> right? Right. So Muslims are going to a passage. Muslims are going to a passage in Deuteronomy saying this shows that Muhammad's a prophet when if they just keep reading, it shows that if Muhammad had been alive during the time of Moses, he would have been stoned to death as a false prophet. And they're saying this is the passage we all need to go to. So what are we talking about here when we say that Muhammad meets those two criteria, that he delivered a revelation that didn't come from God and claimed that it was from God, and that he spoke in the name of other gods. In other words, that he promoted polytheism. Well, according to our earliest Muslim sources, and I now have about 50 Muslim sources on the satanic verses. According to our earliest Muslim sources, Muhammad felt really bad that his tribe wasn't converting to Islam. So he, he longed for a revelation that would help them convert, that would help bring them closer to Islam. One day, he got the revelation he was looking for. He was uh, receiving what is now Surah 53 of the Quran. Okay. And as he's receiving this revelation, this is, this is the revelation that he received and delivered to his followers. It said, Have you not heard of Alat and Alusa and Manat, the third, the other? These are the exalted cranes whose intercession is to be hoped for. So the Alat, Alusa, and Manat were three pagan goddesses that Muhammad's tribe believed in. Right. It says their intercession is to be hoped for. In other words, these are these bird goddesses who can carry your prayers to Allah. And so he's declaring that it's okay to pray to these pagan goddesses now because Allah is the, the main god, but you can have intercessors. You can have intercessors, these, these uh, pagan goddesses. So Muhammad delivers this revelation to his followers. He delivers the revelation to his followers. Allah just revealed to me that we can now pray to these three pagan goddesses. His followers bow down in honor of the revelation and the pagans bow down in honor of the revelation as well. They were overjoyed that Muhammad was now promoting polytheism, openly promoting polytheism. Later, Muhammad came back and said, sorry, the devil made me do it. Uh, I didn't actually, uh, I didn't, that didn't actually come from God. And in the history of At-Tabari, Muhammad even says, I have fabricated things against God, which he did not speak. Now think about that. I have fabricated things against God, which he did not speak. It's the history of At-Tabari. Muhammad says that. I fabricated things against God, which he did not speak. So Muhammad fabricated things against God, which, which, uh, which didn't actually come from God. And what was he doing? He was promoting prayer to pagan goddesses. He's promoting prayer to pagan goddesses. And let's recall, what were the criteria according to which someone would have been stoned to death mm -hmm. under the rule of Moses? Let's read it one more time. Deuteronomy chapter 18, verse 20, just two verses after the verse that supposedly proves that Muhammad was a true prophet. What do we have? But the prophet, clearly talking about a false prophet, but the prophet who presumes to speak a word in my name that I have not commanded him to speak, or who speaks in the name of other gods, that same prophet shall die. So if, if Muhammad had been around during the time of Moses, he would have gotten a, a, a much different reaction. Fortunately for Muhammad, he was around pagans and they thought it was great that he delivered a revelation promoting polytheism. If he had done that during the time of Moses and said, hey guys, let's go after Allah, Aluz and Manat. We're going to pray to them. They're going to carry our prayers to Allah. Uh, Moses would have ordered the people to pick up stones and stone him to death right. as a false prophet. And so our Muslim friends tell us that they respect Moses, but they can't respect Moses because Moses would have, would have executed Muhammad. And so how do Muslims uh, deal with this issue? Well, again, they never manage to read entire chapters. They'll, they'll cherry pick a verse, ignore what comes after it, and especially ignore their history. Uh, which is why so so few Muslims know that Muhammad delivered the satanic verses. Amen. And I want to add, just from Deuteronomy 13, there is more criteria in there. If a prophet or a dreamer of dreams arises among you and gives you a sign or a wonder, and the sign or wonder that he tells you come to pass, notice, and if he says, let us go after other gods which you have not known, and let us serve them, you shall not listen to the words of that prophet or that dreamer of dreams, for the Lord your God is testing you. And then it goes on to say, you shall purge the evil 
from your midst. So even if Muhammad said things that came to pass, he still was leading people to worship a different God, not the God of Moses. And that's why our Muslim friends, here is your favorite passage, Deuteronomy 18, 18. Please proceed to read verses 19 and 20, and you tell us why in the world should anyone take Muhammad seriously and consider him to be a prophet when in fact he wasn't actually speaking on behalf of Yahweh, the God of Moses. Until next time, have a blessed day. Thank you for watching this video. Be sure to like and subscribe to our channel, Sierra International, and click on the bell so that you receive notifications whenever we publish a new video or go live. I would also like to appeal to you to consider becoming a Patreon patron by clicking the link right below. By doing so, you can give towards the production of these videos. There are also other options for you where you can give to our channel. I thank you from the bottom of my heart.